And let's stay with migration, but move from the macro to more of the micro. The Israeli government this week approved the immigration of 3,000 Ethiopians with Jewish roots in response to the ongoing internal conflicts tearing through Ethiopia. But not all Ethiopians who want to come to Israel have Jewish claims. At a new Tel Aviv gallery, a unique exhibit is displaying portraits of nine of 44 Ethiopian women who were kidnapped from their homeland and forced into slavery in the Sinai Desert before making it here. The unveiling of their identity comes at a price, but it's their way of dealing with their ordeal and fight to gain permanent humanitarian status here in Israel. Our Pierre Kloschandler met with the painter and one of her subjects. In the beginning, only their eyes pierced the silence, for darkness had befallen upon the face of these women. At first, I painted only the eyes to protect their privacy. They, too, didn't want to reveal themselves. They had shifty eyes, but then later, they turned their face towards me, and now they look at us. Eteitu, Demano, Irus, nine portraits, nine women who would rather have stayed away from the limelight, part of a group of 44 Ethiopian girls aged 14 to 20 who 10 years ago were abducted by traffickers from their homeland, sold and forced to slavery in the Sinai Desert, tortured, ransomed, and abandoned on the border between Egypt and Israel. Summoning the strength to speak out the unfathomable while leaving the unsaid and unspoken required last-minute negotiations with Desta and a bit of self-persuasion. I understand I mustn't be ashamed. It wasn't my fault. I didn't agree to this, didn't choose to live through this. It happened. I must get up and stand up again on my own. I need, I try, to be. <laughs> Collecting testimonies of victims of human trafficking and slavery comes also at a price for Nama, a social worker and activist. We had to prove that deportation to Ethiopia is tantamount to a death sentence. So I sat with each of them and asked all kinds of questions that I shouldn't ask. And I listened and wrote their stories the best way I could. Horrific things from the darkest cellars of humanity, really hard and shattering stuff. Naama transitioned from writing to painting, Desta from self-imposed seclusion to exposure. Self-imposed silence was important, yet I didn't feel secure. Within my own self, there were lots of shouts and thoughts and bad dreams. When I came out of this dark closet, there were shouts within my community, but I felt more free inside. I felt the need to get it out and to raise awareness. The group of 44 was imprisoned in Israel, some for over a year, till they were granted temporary residency status by Israel's interior ministry. Uluyanshi smiled at the one-year visa, a visa which is about to expire. I'm here in Israel, but not really. I don't know for how long. On December 8th, the hotline for refugees and migrants in Israel will appear in the appeals tribunal and request that the group be granted permanent humanitarian status. For me, the meaning of contemporary art means involvement in the day-to-day -day life of the neighborhood and impact on the existing reality. The fact that the gallery is established in the southern Tel Aviv neighborhood, an area rife with trafficking, points the way to raising awareness to these human issues. Each of these women's soul is whole. As a whole, the paintings and drawings of oil on canvas, of charcoal on paper, compose a collective thread, a complex story complete with concealed and revealed pain, with hopelessness, or with calligraphed hope as tattooed in the ancient Ethiopian language on Desta's neck. Pierre Kloschendler, Tel Aviv, I-24 News.